Hello YouTube! Here we are with another Throwback Thursday and it's a big one this week because we are doing the American Civil War weekend of 2012 uh, the annual mass games we used to play um, well I used to play, I don't know, they actually still do it because uh, circumstances haven't been at the club for three years at the moment but uh, I'll be uh, getting back there it was more than 5,000 miniatures in scale 28mm, a humongous table, 30 participants including the judges and supporting people. So uh, you saw, saw last year's uh, episode which was a few weeks ago. And then uh, we got first bull run which was a union victory. And um, this year we are moving to the western theater where we are going to battle Stones River in Tennessee or Mercefree Butto. The Army of the Cumberland under Rosencrantz gets involved with the Army of the Mississippi under Braxton Bragg. So historically, victory went to the Union as the Army of the Cumberland refused to reboot the war. So will history repeat itself over the coming weekend or does the Western Offensive take a whole turn around? I will take the role of G.S. Negley, once more a general that survived the war and who commands the 2nd Division Center under overall command of George H. Thomas. And commanding the following regiments, the 1st Brigade of uh, Spears with the 1st and 2nd Tennessee, the 14th Michigan, the 85th Illinois and the 10th Wisconsin Battery, then the 2nd Brigade of Stanley which had the 19th Illinois, the 11th Michigan and the 18th and 69th Ohio. My 3rd Brigade had Miller for uh, uh, 37th Indiana. 21st and 74th Ohio and the 78th Pennsylvania and I had the artillery support of the Kentucky Battery B and the 1st Ohio Batteries G and M. So I will be traditionally appearing on the battlefield rather late unless I just uh, roll great which I <laughs> basically never do. But I already have a nice annual stunt or tradition in mind so uh, we'll see if uh, we actually do that but uh, yeah you get the idea. So, we're moving on to day one then. So the guns are rolling forward, the regiments march shoulder to shoulder and the drums beat the rhythm of the marching. The battle for Stones River is underway and day one saw the first numerical superior confederates try to force a breakthrough against the on the defense union before their corpses start to filter in and overwhelm in the southern independence effort. So without further ado, this is gonna have a lot of pictures by the way. I'm presenting here all the pictures of day one, in between some things that happened during the day, but not necessarily with that specific picture. So it was a general event and uh, you're so busy with uh, moving figures that you're not taking exact notes all the time. So uh, the table is too big to be on the hotspots with the camera at every moment and I do have my own division to command after all. So uh, the setup of the tables and the forces are ready to be deployed for battle. So uh, we use a TSS style system, uh, it was a huge table which can be uh, split down the middle, rolled open with wheels and then uh, when we take picture moments we would roll the tables back together, so uh, it was three tables in total. Uh, the Confederate center doesn't seem to make a decision where to make their stand, so the Union can file onto the battlefield as good as unopposed. Well, it was a bonus. Cluttering the flank in a true blue tidal wave, so dummy blocks hide the deployment of the initial troops on the battlefield, which results in some troops cowering to advance on the Confederate side. On the other flank, the Confederates suffer their first general casualty, as well as a smattering of a brigade by some devastating volleys from uh, that wing. So that's you. you can see all the orange and blue blocks, so that's uh, units not yet identified by coming into line of sight and everything. Uh, yeah. But um, that, that was a system that we used for a few years, so it worked really well. Um, but this caused the rebels to get blocked behind Stones River, opposing the Union thin flank. But there are various regiments nearby to fill in should a gap be created and the Confederates should try and pass the river by means of the fording places. Uh, as you can see here, there was a whole line, but really a, a thin blue line. Uh, we're not talking that uh, British uh, police series. Uh, standing there but yeah they, 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 they didn't really uh, push on for some reason so um, 
My own division, the second of the second corps, is traditionally the make or break division that comes on last on the table. So either make a stopgap if the line would be shattered or try and break through if we're holding and it appeared behind the woods in front of the mass confederate cavalry which troops of us hold. And the stretched line fighting on the banks of Stone River. So this leaves me with a choice to either reinforce the one side double over the ridge to go for the militia horsemen or split my command and try to move both. So um, there you see I'm slowly moving onwards here on the table. Uh, the choice was actually made for me but a Johnny Rep might be reading this so uh, <laughs> I ain't telling it yet. <laughs> uh, well I made the choice actually but uh, when I posted uh, the whole uh, report uh, back in 2012 I knew there were some people already looking for the pictures and as the attack that I would do would come on day two, that's why I didn't uh, type it down there and uh, otherwise it would be prepared uh, in the evening. So by the end of day one most troops are on the table, uh, we did play 11 turns including some unrevealed still on both sides. So uh, the Union has now the numerical and artillery superiority and can be expected to start taking the offenses of on day 2 as the line has held better than we even expected ourselves. So, yeah. It, it wasn't really a... Oh, bad luck or something. The Confederates just didn't push. They, they just stood there. So, casualty-wise, the Union had lost two and a half regiments so far. The Confederates about five regiments, a battery and a brigade general. So most objectives are still in one hand or the other, but none are in the thickest of the fighting yet, as is traditional in these kind of mega battles. Positions have been taken, lines have been drawn, and now it's all getting prepared for the battle breakout. In earnest at the dawn of the 1st of January 1863, which would be the second uh, day battle. Uh, the day ended with a diner in a local Chinese restaurant, by the way, and for me with an additional hour of work presenting you. Back then, uh, the blog post. So uh, daylight savings time is also going to steal me an additional hour of sleep, but the staff must not gather hope to mother we will hammer and end Braxton Bragg's ambitions once and for all. Or at least uh, that's what we hope. So uh, going on to day uh, two of the game, uh, it's New Year's Day and the Emancipation Proclamation has gone into effect, eliminating all possible interference of Great Britain on the side of the Confederacy. So it's uh, 1st of January 1863 when the second day takes place and um, as the day draws first light, a very early one to boot, the forces start their advances. Um, today the Union has planned to make the push to go for the stalemate draw they had secured yesterday and bring it over to a victory now that all our reinforcements had arrived. Um, in hindsight I would say Confederates uh, really lost their momentum in the first day. So the south still hasn't moved through the center, so they left two divisions uh, sitting idly and not taking part in the battle. And the bit they would start to do during the day would turn out to be far too little, far too late. Uh, they were just mulling around there as you can see on the pictures. Um, well, the, the, the whole flood was coming over the flanks and they just stood there. So in the meantime, a uh, second corps is racing to the right flank. Uh, my commander niggly collecting each and every battery along the way to recreate one of Napoleon Bonaparte's grand batteries. So whenever somebody of my corps left behind the artillery because they didn't want to move it, I just uh, came along, picked it up and brought it along. Uh, however, by the time the battery was formed, uh, no less than 11 batteries numbering 31 sections in total, the enemy had withdrawn and yielded the fort, so to withdraw into a nearby forest and take him a strong defensive position. So that was a bit of shame. Uh, that was my uh, stunt plan. I was going to, well, uh, boomstick the hell out of my opponent. Uh, but yeah, he uh, he ran away before I could uh, form a grand huge battery. Uh, on the other flank, the third corps was had decimated the Confederate resistance secured White House and uh, started to file towards the center, leaving a small but still numerical superior force to face remaining Confederate troops. So, in the center itself though, there is no breakthrough as the two lines consolidate towards each other and the battle comes to a halt as the lines are drawn. So this resulted in a victory for the Union, only just in points. But with the knowledge that if uh, more time would pass, the Confederate losses would start to outweigh the Union's even more and the balance would keep swinging further and further in the Union's favor. 
So uh, everybody agreed uh, the Union won that battle. Uh, well, let's say if it took two or three more turns, uh, but we all have to go to work, of course, the day after, uh, the complete Confederate line would have totally collapsed. So, yeah, well, uh, they, they were just, um, by that point, outnumbered uh, due to their, uh, I can't repeat it enough because that's what actually happened, their idleness in the first part, uh, the first day. So, uh, the epilogue, uh, which was, uh, well, of course, written by me uh, <laughs> because I made the blog post, uh, uh, Concrete Wall Murat, uh, as they call me. Uh, it's uh, something, uh, well, club wise, it's a bit of a nickname that they call me Concrete Wall. Uh, an analogy with uh, Stonewall Jackson uh, has to do because uh, in every game system I play, apparently I'm a bit of a master in the skill of playing a, a very defensive battle. So uh, being the anchor point or uh, the, the last stand that uh, for some strange reasons manages to hold up uh, bigger forces. Uh, it's something you will see in uh, future battle reports on these uh, throwback tours as well. Uh, whether it's uh, Dux Britanniarum or it's uh, American Civil War or it's Warhammer 40k, if there has to be defended, then I'm on the top of my game. Uh, just don't give me the keys to the offense because then uh, you're gonna see weird decisions. <laughs> uh, well, it's probably why I was a goalkeeper when I was younger. But uh, yeah, now with this victory, the uh, battle tally swung. Uh, to a perfect balance. In 2008 uh, the Confederates won uh, Gettysburg, I didn't participate there. In uh, 2009 they won Antietam, uh, I only joined in uh, day two with a small unit uh, to fill in for someone. Then the first one I really played was 2010 Second Bull Run, uh, that was a draw and then the one that you could uh, see earlier on this uh, throwback Thursdays, First Bull Run we won and Stones River we also won, so yay us! Go for the blue. Uh, the great benefit uh, is, of course, that there were hardly any rules discussions, only a bit at the end of the, the second day, uh, but nobody got smacked around. So uh, here you can see the final positions of the tables. Uh, big, huge one. Uh, this is all possible, of course, thanks to uh, all the volunteers, uh, the Games Masters, uh, Erwin, Dirk and Christophe, together with organizer Andre. And then at the bottom row, we had uh, Patrick who took the pictures. Uh, Patrick S, other Patrick as such, who provided all the miniatures. Uh, Johan, our club president, was a bartender, and Ronnie, who cooked. And yeah, we had a cook because, as you can see, uh, we had a nice lunch meal. Uh, but of course, let's not forget the valiant yet delusional Southern generals who tried to fight for independence. Uh, on the top row, we had Swa, Richard, Ian, Eric, and Paul. And at the bottom row, we had uh, Eddie, who was their commander in chief, Joseph, Willie, and Kevin. And these are their losses. Um, but as you all know, in the end, they all had to leave the battlefield robbed of their dreams. The coherent chain of command and well-executed plan of the Union swung over the table led by these gallant officers. Uh, on the top row, we had uh, George, Wim, Bart, Liam, Guido and Peter. And then at the bottom row, we had Eddie, Willem, who was our commander-in-chief, Dirk and myself, the only political appointed general present, uh, as you can see. Uh, and these were our losses. So uh, that was it for the uh, second uh, Throwback Thursday report I am posting here of a big battle. I uh, hope you uh, enjoyed listening to my ramblings. Uh, yeah, and uh, see you back for the next time. But uh, by the way, the Confederacy doesn't have to despair because, uh, as you can see here, they still hold some land. Bye-bye, <laughs> thanks for listening. And until the next Throwback Thursday.